I discussed on this show the new book that's out, Fifty Shades of Grey. Actually, it's three volumes. It's a trilogy uh, in three volumes. It's a woman's book, not a man's book. It's a woman's book written by a woman for women. I've got to be redundant and say it that way. A woman's book written by a woman for women. It's a love story. Uh, however, it involves BDSM, the whips, the chains, the spanking, and that sort of thing. Uh, I read the book because so many women are reading it. Everyone I meet is reading the book, or has read the book, or is giving the book to another girlfriend to read. They're done with it. It's, it's all, all over the world, I understand. It's moving this way amongst the female population. Uh, I was not particularly impressed with the book. Uh, I, I thought it was a waste of time. This love story wasn't that dramatic, but it was a different way I thought of teaching people maybe how to have that kind of sex if they were so inclined. The book's on the bestseller list, number one yet, okay? And obviously it's going to be made into the, a movie at some point. This is for the rest of our lives, the rest of your lives, you're going to hear mention of Fifty Shades of Grey. We are now in Brazil, and a judge in Brazil confiscated, you heard me, confiscated Fifty Shades of Grey from all the bookstore shelves. He had the cops pick them up and remove them. And the reason was uh, teenagers were going into the store and opening the book and leafing through it and reading some passages, and the judge felt this was too much for them, too much sex for them at an early age. Right or wrong, that's his position. And he felt the children under 18 had to be protected. And he issued this order. He said, if you promise, in writing, sellers of the book, to seal the books. In other words, wrap them in cellophane. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, we'll give you the books back within five days, and you can sell them. And so that's how the books are now being sold in Brazil. I don't know if what the judge did is right or wrong. We must protect our youth. I think these kids in high school know more than we do uh, about sex today. But the thing I find amusing about all this is sex in and of itself in Brazil. I, I wrote a column last week for Conk Life here in Key West. It's a weekly publication on Brazilian prostitution, prostitution in Brazil. Now listen to what I'm going to share with you, which makes this thing about the shelf and sealing the books a bit absurd, I think. But you have to protect the children. Prostitution is legal in Brazil. There are in excess of one million prostitutes. That's a lot of prostitutes. 250,000 are children between the ages of 11 and 13. That's disgusting, that's bad. It has nothing to do with what I'm talking about now, but I wanted to share that aspect with you. Child, it's the number two country in the world. It's immediately behind Thailand when it comes to child prostitution. Okay, now, prostitution's legal. The World Cup is going to be played in Brazil in 2014, soccer, the World Series of Soccer. There's going to be many visitors. Uh, many people speaking English are coming, some speaking French. The Brazilian government has started a school. It lasts six to eight weeks. And people who are in everyday services, like uh, the bartenders, the cab drivers, the people who work at McDonald's, the people who work in supermarkets, uh, are, can go to this course and are being pushed to take the course so that they can learn the language better, especially English for the visitors that will be coming and provide better service and all that sort of thing. Well, the prostitutes have been invited to come also, the adult prostitutes, and they have a union. Prostitutes have a union since 2002 in Brazil, and the head of the union said this is wonderful because, remember, they're going to learn English and, or better English. This will make it possible for the girls to negotiate better with their customers, make it possible for them to negotiate better. Uh, turns out, as I dug into this thing, that the federal government provides a federal pension to prostitutes. Prostitutes may 
contribute a portion of their earnings to the federal pension plan. And it's invested with everybody else's money that's in government service. And when they retire, the prostitute has a pension uh, awaiting her from the federal system. I think that's good for the prostitute. Uh, they also have a book, a manual from their labor department, the country of Brazil labor department, that specifies the, the uh, not the businesses, not the industry, but the work, the jobs that are recognized, the things for employment, jobs recognized in Brazil, and sex worker, quote unquote, is one of them. In addition, the Labor Department puts out a manual that tells these people that are listed in the book, like the sex worker, what to do in order to enhance their business. And the sex worker is told, be nice to the customer, do what they want, be attractive, be clean, wear perfume, smile, uh, make yourself accessible, smile all the time, uh, and do, if you can, what your customer wants you to do. They're way out in Brazil, I think. Uh, it is a government recognition of prostitution, in my opinion. Again, I'm not saying whether it's right or wrong. I think it's an absurdity to go that far. Uh, and I don't know how this all plays in with the judge taking Fifty Shades of Grey off the shelf. I don't know. I just wanted to share with you what I think is utter confusion and discombobulation or whatever you want to call it in Brazil on the issue. I want to discuss fraud with you this morning. Three shades of fraud, three degrees of fraud, three types of fraud. Each different at a different level, the, the fraud increases in intensity or, or largeness. The first is Subway. We all know Subway. They, they, they sell the sandwiches. I eat Subway sandwiches. I think they're very healthy. They, they provide us with, uh, I like I can get the whole wheat bread. Uh, I can get a few veggies on top. The only thing I dislike about Subway is that they don't give us enough meat. They, they take a couple, few, three or four slices of a cold cut, slice thin, they fold it up and put it in. Never enough meat, but it's $5 a sandwich, so who cares? They call the Subway foot long, foot long, which means you assume, because they advertise it this way for years, that what you're buying is a sandwich a foot long, and it's big. Sometimes you can buy a half of one, uh, which would be six inches. Well, turns out the foot long ain't a foot. A teenager in Australia measured a Subway sandwich. It was 11 inches. And he went to the press with it. Now people all over the world, including the United States, in the last two weeks have been measuring Subway sandwiches. And guess what they came up with? They're all 11 inches, not 12 inches. My concern, Subway should have stood up and said, hey, we made a mistake, sorry, it wasn't intentional. We'll change the machinery, we'll add another inch onto the sandwich. Instead, Subway's trying to gloss it over by saying, well, we didn't mean it would be that long. This was merely a descriptive term. Bad scene, bad action on the part of Subway. They're going to lose business because of that. If you do wrong, you must stand up and acknowledge that you've done wrong, especially if you're a business person like this that is in effect cheating people. That inch means a lot up here. You were told you were buying an inch, you got screwed out of an inch. You only got 11 inches. This teenager who discovered it also said this is a big deal. Had the Titanic moved one or two inches in another direction, there probably wouldn't have been an accident. Stay with me. I'll come back after this break.